Namaste, viewers. Welcome to Jaipur Dialogue USA. And, uh, you know, just as I wish you and greet you a happy Holi uh, to the entire country, all Hindus, and everybody who joins us in celebration of Holi. Greetings to everyone. Uh, having said that, wanted to request you to please like, subscribe, and support our channel. And uh, we keep bringing you stories and discussions basically focused on not the news and views, because news are, is all over the place you can see these days. But whatever is happening, what is the impact and implication? Why somebody is trying to do what they are trying to do? That's very important to understand. So today I'm taking up a subject matter which is not caught on by the mainstream media, whether on uh, or social media, as aggressively as it should be and must be talked, talked about, I'm going to talk about that because it has an impact and implication on in our dialogues, the viciousness of the intent and everything else that goes around it. So while the country and even in New Jersey, people are taking morchas and protest march against the, the mighty not Tanki Arvind Kejri was arrest in India, you know, I'm I'm a little touched by that because that man, I, I conveyed that to you yesterday, my shot, that I had called him the Maha Notanki in 2014 itself. That was my analysis of that man. But be that as it may, you know, we are living, we are in an election scenario right now. And uh, both India and the United States, I call them the two most prominent democracies of the world. And it is going to have a very vital impact in the way we conduct and do things. Today, I'm going to talk about a much less talked item that happened in Tamil Nadu. It refers to Carnatic music. It refers to Sangeet Kalanidhi Award, which is, you know, to T.M. Krishna, uh, the man who has been, who is a leftist, who is everything else that the awakened society detests, you know, anti, totally rabid anti-Hindu guy. He's a member of Hindus for Human Rights in the United States, which makes it a rather shockingly sad thing. My laughter, my smile was about the sinister nature of the name of the organization, Hindus for Human Rights, behind which they commit, you know, if I may use the word, little loose and liberal, they commit atrocities against Hindus because we don't reply back. We get smitten by the phrase Hindus for human rights, whereas they're doing everything to deny Hindus their human rights. Let's talk about this. I have massive pleasure in welcoming second time in two or three weeks, Professor Lakshmi Bandalabudi, who I know, I told you last time, she is a professor of psychology in City University of New York system. And, uh, you know, I must tell you this. It was when we were talking about it, the amount of involvement she had with this matter, I thought it deserved a session, a talk, for the rest of us to know. I'm a non-Karnataka guy, non-Karnatic music guy. I'm not involved in it. I don't know much about it. I'll confess that. So, Lakshmi ji, very welcome to the show. Tell us about your anger and your frustration about this award of to TM Krishna that has happened. It's not a small matter because there, there seems to have been politics played here. Announcing the award, which is generally done in September, it was done in March. Tell us about that. Sure. Thank you very much for having me again. And it is indeed a pleasure to talk about this. So, so I, I practically grew up with the music uh, sabhas in, in Chennai. Yeah. So kind of very deeply involved uh, in the music world. Uh, and I love music. That's my first passion. And I also have been um, had some training in Carnatic music uh, uh, and also learned many bhajans uh, from a Hindustani musician, uh, my Guruji. So one of the most important thing for me is the music crosses all boundaries. Uh, right. um, and uh, I, I, but I learned uh, Carnatic music from a Tamil Brahmin mommy uh, and then learned from uh, my Guruji Ustaji, a uh, uh, Muslim uh, uh, musician. 
So to me, both of them are the same. They both care about uh, uh, Karaharapriya and Kambodhi and uh, Bhairavi. And so does my Guruji, uh, who cares about uh, Bhairav and Desh and Tilak Kamod and things like that. So there is really no difference between the way, because irrespective of whatever is the ugliness of the streets, uh, we honor that relationship, we respect that relationship, uh, and uh, we uh, uh, in the, uh, honor the sacredness of that relationship. We respect. So Guru Sishya is the most important uh, uh, aspect of it. Uh, so uh, just as a um, uh, you know, preface, uh, with respect, I, I used to listen to T.M. Krishna quite, uh, I have been to many of his concerts, used to hear him. I've always felt a certain unease uh, and I'll tell you why. And each of us have our uh, preferences with respect to music. We, you know, we cannot find any technical faults with their music. Uh, my own personal impression is uh, that he is very skilled in the craft of music, uh, but uh, he doesn't get the art of music or touch the soul of music. Uh, but that's just my personal uh, you know, uh, feeling about it. Music Academy has a right to, I mean, every year when I go to India, I stay in uh, uh, Madras Woodlands Hotel right next. It's a walking distance to Music Academy. Music Academy has been in uh, uh, operating since 1928. Uh, so it is a very prestigious institution. But now there are innumerable sabhas all over, musical uh, sabhas so all over Chennai. And uh, the December season is very special. Uh, because it is what is called as Margari Masam or, um, you know, Dhanur Masam. Uh, and uh, so it, it has a certain festive, uh, um, you know, uh, feel to it. Uh, and it is celebrated extensively all over. And music is the predominant uh, issue there uh, or the, uh, you know, the most important one. So for, um, and uh, why the, so before I get into that, let me give a little brief uh, uh, introduction to who T.M. Krishna is. Incidentally, T.M. Krishna itself, he himself is a descendant of uh, the founder of the Music Academy. T.T. Krishnamachari Hall uh, is the, you know, um, Music Academy Hall. Uh, and he is a descendant of that. He's a grand nephew of that. Uh, and for last ten, more than 10 years or so, uh, or even longer, uh, he has been bad-mouthing Music Academy, uh, accusing them of all kinds of uh, Brahminism and uh, elitism and this and that. Uh, so um, the uh, and he had a very troubled relationship with that. Uh, so the controversy today is what happened now? Suddenly there is some kind of a, um, uh, you know uh, patching up with things. Uh, and secondly, uh, um, the this is the first time the Music Academy has announced the Sangeeta Kalanidhi Award so early on. So whether uh, we can speculate there is some sort of uh, elections are coming, uh, whether there is some sort of a play to that. Uh, so Music, Acad the Music Academy is a private organization. They can award uh, uh, whoever they want to. That's not a, uh, an issue. Uh, there are many, many prominent uh, musicians, really giants, uh, who have not been or they rejected it. Someone like Lal Gudi Jairaman, the most uh, famous violinist, uh, uh, T.R. Mahalingam. Uh, so there are so many luminaries uh, who were not even awarded, uh, you know, by them. So, uh, and they didn't care about it either. Uh, and now, um, you know, uh, Chitravina um, uh, uh, Ravi Kiran, uh, he was a Sangeet Academy awardee uh, and he has returned it. Uh, and Palgat Raghu is a very, very prominent Mridangam player. Uh, and um, he is no more, but his uh, family returned the, um, you know, Sangeet Academy uh, Award. So there are many, many, the most, uh, the first uh, musicians who came out in protest and they withdrew were Ranjini Gayatri. They are one of the, they are reigning so supreme. They are just absolutely remarkable uh, singers, very talented. And so did uh, Trichur brothers from Kerala. So, did, uh, so I think there are many more who are perhaps testing the waters, so to speak, <clears throat> and then they might, uh, you know, come out. Now, who is heading the Madras Music Academy? It is a, a gentleman by name, N. Murali. N. Murali is the brother of N. Ram. So this oh, okay. is... <laughs> okay. 
there um and he made uh, uh when he when uh, you know ranjini gayatri withdrew their uh, a uh, performance during the, the you know uh, uh, festive season in december uh, um he, he he kind of accused them of, they did not say anything they they all they said was we will not participate because this event is going to be uh, um, presided by tm krishna and he has hurt the sentiments of so many people uh, um uh, including saint tyagaraja including um you know uh, um so it is a total and he is really the darling of the left uh, so people who know nothing about the music uh, you know and he gives lectures everywhere so so what is happening is uh, the politics is very very so his main contention tm krishna's main contention is that uh, this is dominated by the mailapur brahmin community uh, and uh, music is uh, they don't permit anybody else to uh you know uh, get into the uh, music academy or they are not taught music uh, and it is really the dominance of the brahmin community yeah um which has no merit whatsoever uh, um so and then he uh, he even said something really very uh, objectionable about the great doyan of music, carnatic music shrimati ms subalakshmi <laughs> i mean when you go and stand in the line in tirupati if you don't listen to the vishwas vishnu sahasranamam by ms subalakshmi yeah, it's an i mean it, it's almost like uh, we we have to listen to that that is just the very nature of it uh, and he said she is made brahmanical she you know and saying that uh, uh, she comes from the devadasi tradition and she may is made brahmanical these are she is such a noble soul she is something that uh, absolute bhakti pours out when she sings um uh, so it is so um, out of um, you know it is really crossing all boundaries of decency to make such um, remarks about uh, um, you know people like that or he'll take the phrase from saint tyagaraja and misappropriate it and misread it and deliberately make it into a weapon for political advancement uh, so people, and secondly he he starts you know he thinks that bhakti has no place in in music it is really it's, what is it is it a music wait 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 he says that the bhakti has no place in music yes he says lyrics has no place we don't need to feel the emotions um uh, and it gets even worse vibhuti ji he plucks the ram out of tyagaraja kriti and puts uh, prabhu yesu Would that not be? Oh my God! Okay, so yeah. wait, wait, wait. I mean, this is fascinating. You know, your opening statement has brought awareness to me, and I'm grateful for that. That I'm doing this conversation with you because, you know, there are so many news items happening every day. It's yeah. impossible to pay attention. But I have also deep interest in music. Yeah. One of the yeah. expressions. So I got caught on by the phrase. Yeah. That music has nothing to do with emotion. How he replaces Ram uh, with Yeshu. Yeah. So you know, I, I'm, I'm really. I'm a little angry about that. Yes. That how the, this entire leadership of the, if I may say so, is so vicious in its propaganda. Absolutely. It is political. It is social. And so the question then comes to my mind: is the people who are returning the rewards or not attending it? Tell me something about them because I had not heard about their name. Sure. So I want to. I want the world to know who have. stood up in a state like tamil nadu yes where brahmins are being targeted it's yes. only now that thanks to anamalai and mr yes. modi's attention to tamil nadu yes that things are changing yes so is there an awakening happening in tamil nadu well, i uh, hope so i yeah, hope please so. tell us something about the political sure. element of this entire movement sure we'll talk about move, not movement move that has preponed the award from september to march and this guy If, if he's from hindu for human rights he is definitely anti hindu i'll put it that way oh he is definitely anti hindu yeah mm-hmm. it is even more outrageous one of the st- statements that ranjini gayatri made were uh, that he is uh, using periya now periya you know ev ramaswami periya mm-hmm. uh, is way back i remember i was a little kid he would uh, garland the ram vigram with um, a chappal chappal mala 
I mean, this is so offensive for anybody. And he sings Tyagra Jakriti and, you know, continues with, um, um, you know, Periyar song. Uh, that is so offensive uh, to many of us. And secondly, this contention that um, it is dominated by Brahman itself is uh, factually incorrect. The Sangeeta Pitamaha of uh, Carnatic music, Sri Saint Purandara Dasa, he was not a Brahmin. He was uh, from the Baniya community, you know, the equivalent of the Baniya community. So we, there has never, or many of the Tamil composers, Garunagiri Nath, these are all not just some Brahminical hegemony. Yeah. What any, anybody, sure, uh, is it factually right that vast majority of the performers are uh, uh, a Brahmins? Yes, uh, perhaps because they grew up in the atmosphere, music practically has been uh, ringing into their ears and they know that Sampradaya. He doesn't want to honor that Sampradaya, TM Krishna. So he says uh, that, um, you know, he can sing anything he wants. He wears a kafiya and a lungi uh, and says, and he'll start singing Allah. And this to him is a social uh, uh, reform. And he wrote a book on Mridangam. See, Mridangam or any percussion instrument is um, made from the skin of the cattle. You know, that is the, and it undergoes a lot of process, um, you know, uh, uh, processing. But he is saying that the players, that was one of the things that he kind of cast aspersions on Palgat Raghu, the Mridangam, the very famous Mridangam player. And he says, uh, uh, these Brahmins will uh, touch that and do that, but they, they don't make it and they don't, um, you know, first place, the players don't even know who is making and perhaps they may go to check out whether the sound is right, whether the skin is too thick or too thin. Uh, they are not in the business of peeling the skin and doing. First and foremost, the uh, rhythm itself is an aspect of Lord Shiva. He is the maintainer of the rhythm of the universe. In Sangeetam, we have a, a saying, Swara Mata and Laya Pita, right? Uh, so he is the maintainer, I mean, uh, the Ananta Tala that is maintained is by Lord Shiva. You can also, you know, he's a charmadhari. He wears the skin of a tiger. Uh, now, uh, what is it? How do you want to interpret these things? Uh, so to, to sort of, um, accuse, and he doesn't give any solutions. Uh, so for all the, um, um, uh, this is where the hypocrisy is. So he went and uh, to the Kuppam area in uh, Tamil, you know, in Chennai, where the fisherman's colony, yeah, and he sort of went and wanted to perform and uh, um, get them interested. They said, they just told him plain, listen, we have our own music traditions. We don't need your Brahminical music to come and uh, dominate us and teach us. So you just get out. Uh, you know, they, they asked him to just simply leave. So there are challenges. There are many people who have done it very silently. Whoever is interested in music, they will just simply teach. But the qualification and the prerequisite for music, you need sadhana. You need sadhana. You need to wake up bright and early. You need that voice. Um, you know, you need to. So he says, Sahityam doesn't make a difference whether it, uh, you know, you, whether it is ram or tree or stone, it is all one and the same. This is offensive for people. Where do you want to draw the line? And Sahityam and Sai Sangeetam, they go hand in hand. You have, you know, when you sing something like um, Janaki Nath Sahaya Kare, Kaun Bigad Kare, Naratera, that, that Jaki Sahaya Kare, Karuna Nidhi, that has to be, that lyrics must be dipped into so much bhakti and so much uh, uh, conviction that when you are in trouble, Janaki Nath Aayegi, you know, Aayega. That, that feeling must be brought out in the music. Uh, the, my own Guruji who taught me this piece, uh, he will say, Beta achha sa gao. you know, sing like this. Uh, this is very important. Uh, that Karuna Nidhi must show that Karuna of Rama. There you cannot, first and foremost, the moment, whether you're a Hindustani musician, uh, Muslim, Ustad or a Pandit or whether, any, 
the moment they even before enter they won't even wear a chappal and go on to the stage they will do you know touch the uh, stage and uh, uh, do naman and then uh, enter the they, that is a sacred space you cannot sort of uh, uh, sully that sacred space and think anything goes so for all the social reforms that these people are talking about they themselves have not why is he surrounded by brahmanical brahmin um, uh, percussionist and violinist why does he not train does he know the challenges of what it takes to train anybody you know my music teacher um, um, she she had a, a one of the student uh, either because of that student's language or whatever she could not say sa ni da pa ni you must get she would always say sa ni sa ni na <laughs> in tamil sa ni means cow dung <laughs> my my teacher would say ram ram what is this uh, i can't wipe this damn cow dung cow dung from her um, voice uh, she just could not get it she could not get sa ni da pa instead she'll say sa ni sa ni sa ni and it is jarring to the ears see when there is thala bhang or whether there is swara bhang it is discordant note yes. you cannot uh, appreciate music right so to bring this sacred music and secondly music comes the, the the raga structures the names of the raga their origins are sanatan dharma there is no dancing around it the names of the raga are uh shan you know shanmuga priya you know it's something that uh, uh, skanda likes it shanmuga is the name of uh, skanda uh, shankarabharanam gauri manohari mohanam we feel the essence of that god when i sing uh, uh, in mohanam something on krishna there is a special charm to it uh, brindavana sar right. we are already in brindavan you know when you uh, set something you know we on lord krishna on um, uh, in brindavan saranga it has uh, a certain magic it has the robustness of um, um, you know uh, shiva when you sing shankarabharanam because that is the jewel of shankar you know that is the jewel yeah. <coughs> let's return to the controversy i mean you are you are definitely very well educated in the process of education of music and you are yourself a singer too so the question i have is that as i see the thread i i suppose T.M. Krishna must be a Brahmin? Yes. He is a Brahmin. Absolutely, now, he is a Brahmin. He is, okay, so now here is my question. As a Brahmin again, I know, yes. as a full disclosure, what is it about Brahmins that non-Brahmins hate so much? And every single upper caste is shoved in in the category of Brahmins. So if you have to attack the upper caste by the majority of not upper caste, if I may put it that way, what is the reason for this hate against brahmins what have they done it i mean is... you and i are very remarkably simple brahmins we have not even entertained the thought of hurting anybody Absolutely. i mean you we, we have sat down and talked several times yes yes, yes. we have never entertained no. the thought of hurting anyone no why what is it about the brahmins and i want to address that with a serious intent what is it that have we done the mishras the thakurs the mahalingams who what have they done to deserve such hate my subject matter is that in these uh, politically surcharged at, at times mm -hmm. when everybody begins to be awoke yeah. and picks on a group to attack that's you what know, i'm trying to say i'm concerned this, about that element yeah. yeah this has happened in the academic world i i personally have been uh, sort of charged of this oh you're a bloody nationalist blah 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 see the pro problem is once you attack the brahmin you are also attacking the hinduism and if they are the bearers or the the repositories of all high knowledge you decapitate and uh, and that way so it is basically anti brahmin is also anti hindu that doesn't mean that um, hindus have i mean brahmins have a monopoly on this at all um but yes you know if you look at bollywood or hollywood i mean even uh, telugu film industry there are these are people who are children of um, artists you know actors of yesterday you know Ra, Ra, nt rama rao son or uh, whether it is a uh, kapoor family in the in the in the bollywood so they know the kind of the culture of it uh, if you come from a family of doctors the children are uh, they are familiar with that world and therefore they learn it 
I, there has never been any situation where uh, people say, I want to listen. Look, the most Brahminical, uh, Samang, I mean, not Samang, Samangudi also, and even uh, Chambai Vaidinath Bhaga, he groomed Yesudas. He groomed Yesudas, who was a great, but Yesudas honors the tradition. You see, they, they are not uh, interested in erasing the tradition. For that matter, he will never, I mean, the way he sings about on Ayapa or Guruva Yurapa and uh, even Carnatic music, he has sung in film music, but nothing that that um, um, Sampradaya of a Carnatic music, he honors it. How many people go, uh, you know, Chambai Vaidhanath Bhagavatar uh, doesn't even wear a shirt, you know, he wears Angavastra, very orthodox. But he groomed him, and this is actually reality. When long time back in fifties or you know, whenever, uh, when um, Yesudas, you know, usually the sishya will accompany the guruji. When uh, you know, in concert. my 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 inquiry was and yeah. is, yeah, what is it about the Brahmins that in Tamil Nadu there is such a hate movement against Brahmins? This is started. It is, it is there in other places as well. Every other upper caste is clubbed as Brahmin and hit at the Brahmin. So the question, my, my inquiry is with you as an academician, how did this leftist mindset, the communist Marxist mindset, get into the educational platform that it has spread mm -hmm. you know, across the world? Absolutely. That we are the evil. So I'm asking you, mm -hmm. what is it about the Brahmins that uh, that creates so much hatred and animosity in non brahmins You know, we, in the previous uh, uh, episode with you, we were talking about how the Jews are also targeted, right? Right. So one of the things is uh, that you are just simply minding your own business and you try to be, you know, educate yourself. And uh, do, that doesn't mean other communities don't do it. Uh, uh, but uh, the anti-Brahmin feeling about the Dravidian uh, DMK party has been legendary. They have been running on that platform. I too have heard when I was a papati, in Tamil papati means Brahmin. It's a very derogatory kind of uh, uh, thing. And, and so they relish that, you know, even now in the social media and everything, oh, these Brahmin, you know, in print, I saw an article, oh, now the Brahmins are having a meltdown. You, you see, that is how the issues are framed. Um, and uh, whether it uh, so, uh, this has become the fashion of um, um, the uh, political uh, scenario. I don't think it has anything to do with who the Brahmins are. It is something about them that uh, um, you know. It's not like these people are going and provoking a anybody here. Yeah? Um, and I think I sent you the letter that Ranjini Gayatri right. responded to. N Murli. he himself is a Brahmin. N Ram is a Brahmin. So what are they? They themselves could be accused. If they really want the social justice and all that, why don't they lower the prices in Music Academy? Can an ordinary person go to Carnegie Hall and purchase that exorbitant amount of ticket? The, you know, why are you preaching to somebody that you are not practicing it yourself? There are many people, quietly they run uh, music uh, camps and all that and bring in people from various communities uh, uh, to kind of train them and they they undergo that training so this itself and they do it quietly they don't need the publicity to the, they know how challenging it is tm krishna himself was sent back from the fisherman's colony you know he said we don't need we have our see that is the arrogance isn't it you think that they don't have music and they need to be no they have their music they have their rhythm. They have their folk tune. The percussion in instrument itself comes from that. You could say that uh, the skin of every uh, the animal is used to maintain the rhythm of the universe, uh, which Shivji, all sounds come from Shiva's, uh, you know, damru. You know, uh, so to kind of um, uh, say that these people are elitist. What is um, T M Krishna? Does he have uh, who's mm. playing for him mm. or mm. accompanying artists uh, for him? He himself is born with a silver spoon, you know, white <laughs> platter. He comes from very wealthy household. 
Now tell me one thing. Now yeah. this particular academy that does the award ceremonies and does the award, mm -hmm. it's a private organization, right? Yes. It is a private organization. The question then arises is they pick and choose who they reward. That's true. They have a right uh, to do that. They have. So the people who have returned the awards, there were a couple of names there. Yeah. The people who have returned the awards, is it possible to create a parallel award mechanism? The parallel award, award wapsi? Yeah. I yes. mean, I, I'm not, see, what I mean to say is that Award Wapasi thing happened in India in 2014 when Mr. Yes. Modi won, right? Yeah. None of the people who returned the trophy returned the money along with that. Right? No. <laughs> we know that too. Yeah. They did not. Many people said, if Modi is, we will leave the country. Or we are so uncomfortable in this country. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. They are all there in India. So there is a, there is a need to expose that facade. Absolutely. So Absolutely. I, was, I was going to ask on Twitter to somebody, well, hey, guys, prepare a list of those people who threaten to leave, threaten to leave the country as if the country would miss them if they die or disappear. I, I, I don't wish them any evil. Yeah. But, if you know, it's a very, very universal yeah. thing. Absolutely. Death, the, life begins. Death happens. It's an inevitability of life. Yeah. Life continues on. That's the beauty of life. So the question here I have is that, you know, the people who have been returning awards, mm -hmm. Is that appropriate to do so? I'm, I'm asking a very general question, taking, taking into the ba background when all the people were returning the awards when Modi won, right? So these people are retaliating and showing that your actions, we can also return award, mm -hmm. or is it becoming a fashion? You know, that's a, a, a tricky and kind of in an ambiguous zone. Your question is very fair. Um, the, uh, the, the these musicians have been sort of attacked. Did Modi go and attack them? The answer no. is not. They they don't like him. But these people have not returned the awards because they just don't like the Music Academy. What they are saying is that we will not. You have every right to kind of uh, uh, give the award to whoever you want. Uh, but at the same time, uh, there is a certain element. Uh, of, uh, of fairness, and they have a right to sort of withdraw their participation in the, um, you know, um, uh, award, uh, uh, whether they will take that award or return that award is still their prerogative. So that cannot be, uh, um, you know, um, uh, sort of uh, questioned. I think it's, uh, it's a fair thing, you know, it's just not one group that has the um, uh, high ground to return awards. And these people are just simply saying, we too will reward. You know, no, there's nothing new about this award wapsi. Uh, there are many people who have uh, even rejected it. Uh, uh, Lal Gudi Jairaman didn't even want it. Uh, uh, so that's not uncommon at all. Uh, so th that's fine. Uh, are you there? Uh, hello? Um, looks like we got cut off. happened at your end okay we are oh, okay. back in the show okay so okay. so yeah. the, the question here is very important before we close the show is that mm -hmm. you know this is a serious matter yes i'm not against the decision taken by the artist to return the award no i'm not yeah because they have felt indignant about it. they yes. say it's a private company mm -hmm. private entity that has given the award and now they have openly invited a complete wokistani Yes. You know, a complete Wokistani who is anti-Hindu, mm -hmm. pushes in his own tiny agenda, yeah. evil agenda, whatever yeah. it is, to be uh -huh. smirch yeah. uh, Shivaji, Shivaji's name with Jesus and others and Allah and others. Yeah. I have nothing against any of those. Yes. But I'm saying that don't destroy my ethnicity, my religiosity, Absolutely. my cultural, my spiritual element by importing others. So before we close, I wanted to check with you one more thing. And that is the spread of leftists in the academia. This is a very bothersome thing because two years ago or so, uh, there was a discussion on Jaipur Dialogue about the leftists losing political power. Mm 
And a thinker at that time mentioned that they are no longer, they have passed the stage of having political power. Yeah. They do not need political power because they have now established themselves in the academia yeah. where their teachers or people aligned with their thought process Absolutely. are influencing the young and the you know, young minds who are in the process of learning. Absolutely. It is very easy to twist and turn a student's mind through mm -hmm. persuasion, award, or choose any method you want. Yes. I'll give you a higher grade and all that stuff. It's going on, right? We know yes. that. Yes, yes. How did this happen? And, you know, you are a witness to the whole process. Absolutely. When do you think it began and what must be done? You know, it began a long time back, ever since the collapse of uh, the Soviet Union. Uh, suddenly, the Western world, uh, sort of, uh, they... Uh, um, found these sort of a politics of it about class equality and social justice. Uh, um, all this became the fashion of the day. And as you very well know, uh, from Harvard to all these uh, top uh, Ivy League universities, uh, they're completely, 97% of the faculty are left-leaning. Uh, so what happens is uh, they want to control. See, the uh, to put it in a nutshell, Vibhutiji, um, the... There is no great uh, theoretical breakthrough in humanities and social sciences. So, okay, so the uh, because they are caught up in the binaries, uh, it has uh, the so whatever were the existing earlier philosophies uh, are no longer making sense of the very rapidly changing world. So you, it is not uncommon in any of the conferences that we go to that I have been to also where there is nothing new is being said. So the only thing that they have to do is create and manufacture a crisis, a crisis of race, a crisis of gender fluidity, a crisis of um, you know a class and you name it. So all these things have been very horribly uh, weaponized and then you're using this to kind of discredit anyone. So the good part, whether it is in the music or in the academia, I don't need the certification from Ivy League in order to write and do what I want to do. Similarly, the musicians don't need the, the music academy. There are zillion, you know, um, uh, music uh, halls uh, and organizations that are interested in pure music. Uh, they don't need this award to kind of validate uh, right. who they are. Uh, uh, right. So that's the reason that this is... Um, a bigger problem. So when you don't know what to do, right, uh, how to sort of advance your philosophies and learn from other schools of thought, uh, then what is happening is uh, this becomes a weapon. See, to be you earlier you asked about uh, the difference between the earlier award Vapsi Brigade and the today's Vapsi Brigade. All that Ranjini Gayatri and Trichur brothers and uh, Ravi Kiran, all they said was, we will not perform when it is being presided by T.M. Krishna, because the awardee is going to be presiding over that entire conference. Uh, and they think it is an insult to them to, to right. sort of pa participate in that. So they have just withdrawn. Now, but, uh, Ram has, uh, N. Ram uh, has written, you saw that in that letter. Yes, I did. He said, oh, this is the casteist, uh, elitist coterie. What are you? So Ranjini Gayatri asked the question. Uh, all right, uh, it takes so many years for us to come and perform. Uh, so much sadhana is needed to come and perform in the music academy. And why don't you sort of make it more democratic? Uh, just simply, why, why is that, a, a, you know, the very institution that they are running, uh, uh, the uh, board of trustees, they're all Brahmins. They just seek their resignation and bring in someone. And they are asking the right question. This is the way the Dharma Yuddha. And secondly, they are accusing the N. Ram and N. Murli are accusing Ranjini Gayatri of elitism and uh, going to the, the media. Well, when you are going to the media, you have to also go to the media. So this is the brilliant part. This is the interesting dichotomy. That's the reason why I was asking the question. Yeah. Yeah. Because the earlier 2014 award of opposites that happened mm -hmm. against Modi, that was all driven by hate against yes. Modi. It yes. was driven by hate against Modi. Yes. People had received awards 
from the Congress regime at that time. You know. Yes, I know. So, I know that very so it well. was totally political. Yes. Here, what happened was that because of the backdrop of that award wapsi, when these people were returning the awards, it almost seemed like because majority of the people do not know the truth. Yes. So it almost seemed like that it was a government award, and these people are anti-government. So there is yes. interesting chess play going on here. Yes. So how to manipulate the sentiments and and Ram and and Murli, Brahmins themselves, yeah. were accusing them of elitism, whereas those who yeah. were practicing in 2014 were the elitists. This is a very interesting dichotomy. Listen, yes. this is a fabulous conversation. Okay. We cannot have this conversation resolved, done in half an hour. We will need to do more conversation on this. We have to expose these elements. So thank you very much for joining. One final today. point, uh, we will yeah. see you because yeah. the, the important distinction that we have arrived at throughout the world is uh, now we fail to make a distinction between discourses of hegemony and discourses of resistance. You are resisting against the hegemony and the foul um, lang you know, uh, language that is used uh, mm. uh, by uh, T.M. Krishna. So you're only responding to that. Uh, right. And when you don't make these distinctions, you're drawing false equivalences. Thank you. That's Thank you very much. Viewers, please like, subscribe and support our channel. As I always say, Satyame Vajayate, for truth to triumph, you've got to stand for it. That's what Lakshmi is doing. Lakshmi Ji is doing today. That's what we try to do. Stand for the truth. Satyame Vijayate. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.